Uh, hi, this is Joe again with another uh, movie review, but this time I'm going to do the uh, 1997 classic, Academy Award winning film from 1997, Titanic. Of course, the stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, uh, Billy Zane, Kathy Bates, uh, Victor Gorba, and, and Gloria Stewart and Bill Paxton. And of course, there's not too many people that don't know the story, but the story is, of course, on, on the premise of the film, of course, telling the story of the sinking of, of the Titanic. And from the point of view of a fictional, uh, of two fictional characters, and King Rinsler and Leonardo DiCaprio playing the two fictional characters, Jack and Rose, who play the young lovers who found each other on the Titanic and of course on the main voyage and we're on the main voyage of the Titanic of course we know what happened they hit an iceberg and it sank in the North Atlantic and it's definitely one of the few movies that I have seen that has won the Academy Award for Best Picture that actually deserved it now it's true I haven't seen any single movie that has won the Academy Award for Best Picture but I have seen movies that should have won the best picture and didn't. Like E.T. and Zero Dark Thirty are two examples. The movies that should have won the best picture and didn't get it. But Titanic got the movie that was the, I think it was like the first real blockbuster film that actually won the best picture. I don't think it's ever, ever happened before. Except for, you, maybe you can cut for us, Uh But as a blockbuster that won for best picture and this one did and this one was a little more movie from the time it came out in December well the day it came out was December 19th 1997 and it was the number one movie from then to about maybe like April or May it was like the number one film for about like five months four and a half five months and so you know that's of course week to week it goes down and how much money they make over a week if I keep going up. It fluctuates. But I usually get between 20 and 3 million every single week for about like at least 4 months. 4, four, four and a half months. And then 5 months later it finally ended its run as number 1 film. But it was still the number 1 film. Uh, still making a boatload of money. Put on the pun. Uh, when it came out on video and DVD on September 1st, 1998, which is like a long time, you know, like about 10 months. So it came out on, on like 9 or ten, nine months when it came out on video at that time. But since it was still making money, it was still you know, in the box office, which was unbelievable. Well, the premise of the film is Bill Bax, Bill Pax's character. Is a, uh, is a researcher, a titanic researcher, and he's looking for a, a diamond for the root of the heart of the ocean, which is supposed to have been, according to research, supposed to be in the wreckage of the titanic. And of course the diamond is fake. I mean fake, I mean, I mean it's not, it wasn't a real, there was no such real diamond, that's one, and there's no diamond like that or similar to that in the records of the Titanic. No one had a diamond like that because it was like a premise to get this character Rose to tell a story. And what they found instead was in the cabin of the Billy Zane character, remember Cal, who's probably Rose's fiance. They found it his safe in the cabin. And they brought it up to the surface and they cracked open the safe and they didn't find a diamond, but what they found was a, a drawing that Leonardo DiCaprio's character did. He played a character named Jack Dawson, who was an, was an artist. And they found it, and Gloria Stewart, who plays the older Rose, saw, saw a news story and saw the, the portrait on the news and contacts Bill Baxter's, Bill Baxter's character and says, Did you find a diamond here? And he, he says no, and he got to the ship. 
and of course they want to see if she gets there. She tell tells her story and the rest of pretty much the rest of the movie is her telling her story. And you have King Wizard playing the younger version of of Boris Stewart's character, Rose. And how he and how she met Jack Dawson, the Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, character. And that she was going to kill herself because she was in this marriage. She was engaged to be married to Billy Zane, this character who played a guy named Cal Hockley. It's probably a rich steel tycoon. And, you know, she, she felt trapped and she wanted to kill herself to end it. And Jack Dawson, played by Leonardo, the character who talked to Albert. And,. So that pretty much what what, what happened. And of course, there was an instant attraction there, and they went to dinner in first class, which Jack Dawson's character was supposed to be in steerage, which is the poor, the poorest of the poor. And he gets invited to dinner, and then afterwards, or the next day, they practically fall in love, but pretty much like the next day. And they have, of course, the famous nude scene, which is like one of the first few nude scenes in the, in the movie. It didn't require sex because usually when you have a new scene, you see, uh, you know, the two characters and the scene having sex, but but not but not in this case. The sex scene came later uh, because Jack Dawson's character drew women in the nude, and so he did a portrait of Kate Winslet in the nude. And what a lot of people don't know was that that was the very first scene that Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio did film together in. Titanic, and so to loosen loosen up, up the scene, King Wizard comes out in the famous kimono and flashes him. Flashes Le Leonardo on the campus character, and he puts a laugh at, and that eases the tension a bit because you know the first scene they, they did was that film together was that new scene, and there was King Wizard's body that you saw in it. It was not a body double. There was her actual body that you see in it. And which of course, you know, guys are horny guys, you know, like like me, because it so King Wizard's naked body on, on screen. And then, uh, of course, they so they they were in the movie. They did the famous love scene in the in the car in the cargo hold. And as soon as the love scene, they did the love scene. That's when you had the sinking. When the ship hits the, hits the iceberg, that's when you have one of the most awful lines Iceberg, right ahead. And that's when, of course, it hits the iceberg, and of course, the rest of the movie is them trying off the ship. And of course, Billy Zane's character is just chasing him in the movies because he was upset that King Wizard wanted Leonardo and Captain, not him. Because he wanted, because Billy Zane wanted her, she didn't want him. And so you had that, you know, little bit of a chase scene, which, to me, it wouldn't have a, a bit of knuckle fist fight between Leonardo DiCaprio and Billy Zane, which I think it was shown in the trailer, but not in the uh, film itself, or the final cut of the film, which is which I felt like should have had a fight scene. But, you know, James Cameron didn't end in that, end in that scene, or put that scene in the, in the final cut. Which it should have been. But you had Kathy Bates, uh, who was the Academy Award winner uh, for Misery, played the real life person called Mar Marley Brown. Of course, they won, if you know, like in the, I think in the 40s or 50s, it was made to a movie called The Unsinkable Marley Brown, starring Debbie Reynolds. So she plays a real life character, but, but one of the more interesting things about Titanic is, except for those main characters, like about Billy Zane, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, Francis Fisher, who plays uh, Leonardo uh, Kate Winslet's mother, plus the David Warner, who plays the, uh, the henchman, like Billy Zane's henchman. All those characters were fictional, but everyone else in the movie was not a fictional character. Uh, I mean, talking about um, you know, Thomas Andrews, played with Victor Garber. Who was the ship's designer? Uh, I don't remember who played uh, 
the head, the head of the white storm line. I forgot who the actor was playing that for. But he was a real person. And of course, I already mentioned Kathy Bates playing uh, Molly Brown. And, but everything else that's surrounding those characters, so that actually happened. Especially the scene with, where uh, Thomas Ismay was the head of the white storm line talking to the captain of the ship. I'm telling him you, know, you must go faster. You know, in the ship, pulling, almost pulling like Jeff Goldblum in, and uh, Jurassic Park. So you must go faster because I want the ship to to get in early. Again, the night before, instead of on Wednesday, instead of on Wednesday, coming on Tuesday night. And so he made his go down the, and go faster. So, but unfortunately, they ignored the ice warnings. And they're going through an ice where they had icebergs. And it's important to tell that Al Gore didn't complain about global warming in 1912, the same with Titanic. Uh, anyway, but they were going through an ice field and it didn't slow down and it didn't have binoculars for the lookouts. So, of course, it was so dark, there was, there was no moon. And they couldn't see the iceberg till it was too late, and the, and the Titanic has too small of a rudder, so it couldn't really turn properly, couldn't turn fast enough, and that's how he ended up hitting the iceberg. And so that whole thing with the iceberg, the whole sinking, I thought you felt like you were going down with the ship. Uh, literally, you felt like you felt like you were sinking, along with it, and you felt the urgency for them to get off the ship. Because they had, you know, they had, they didn't have enough lifeboats for everyone on, on the ship. So about 700 people will survive, and only just over like 1,500 people died. And most of them froze in the cold water of the North Atlantic. There was some, some, some drowned. There was a good portion of drowned, but most of the people froze in the icy water. And that scene where. And after the ship went down, which is really a dramatic uh, scene, and a very powerful scene. And the, whole, the whole sequence of the sinking was, was a very powerful and moving scene. And when they showed the frozen bodies in the water, everybody, when I saw everywhere, the whole gas was, oh my god, it's so, this is so horrific. I think because of the graphic nature and of the sinking, because there were other t Titanic films that came out, like A Night to Remember, and another movie that was actually titled Titanic, and there was also a TV, a Titanic TV movie. But none of the film, I don't think none of them filmed the, the sinking the way it was filmed in the in the James Cameron movie. Because it was really graphic and it was really well made and well done, and that's why uh, Titanic was at the time the most expensive movie ever made and but it made a ton of profit because it was like the highest grossing movie of all time until Avatar came along it was the highest grossing film made over like a one and a half billion dollars that's billion and it was that's how great this this film was and people I remember there was like one story this is how obsessed people were with this movie that it was a mother and daughter went every single day to see this movie. When I was doing this original theatrical release, they saw it every single day. Now these two people had absolutely no lives. I mean, who goes to see the, the same movie every single day when I was playing? I can understand people go to movies every week, but to see the same exact movie every single day for six months remember how long it was the tank came out but the thing that really sold me on the film and I love people was this movie soundtrack it was made by James made by James Horner the music for music for Titanic he really did a great uh, film uh, excuse that noise to us now because there was an airplane going over to the Guardian airport because I mean, I live in the airspace of the Hawaii Airport. That's where it was. And James Horner was a great musician, a songwriter. He did the uh, music for Titanic, and he really captured the 
feeling and the mood for, for uh, Titanic. And of course, he won the Academy Award for the score, and he also wrote the song uh, Celine Dion performed My Heart. And you didn't hear that My Heart Will Go On. It's the song. You didn't hear it until the closing credits. And that's also one of the best. And after a while, people got sick of the song and they took it out on Celine Dion. I don't know why. Uh, Celine Dion is one of the greatest singers in the world, and they took, took it out on it because the song was played every single day for like about well, a year or well, almost a year because people were upset oh can you play the song again can you play the song again and, and DJs got sick of playing it and and everybody got sick of the Slang the Young song and the, the Titanic song and I think that because over the years since then people got sick of the movie they got sick of the sick of the song but despite the fact that this, this movie really does de deserve Phrase, the song is in the phrase, the soundtrack is in the phrase. I mean, there's very few things that was wrong with it. The only thing that, was, that people could argue that was wrong about was a couple of inconsistencies there. Uh, a couple, maybe a couple of plot holes. Uh, one of the plot holes that people talk about all the time is the scene where, and in the beginning of the film, when you see Gloria Stewart going on the Caldish, which is the research vessel that reaches. And research is Titanic, and research is how the ship is degrading because it's been underwater for a hundred years now, or well, a hundred one years now. And she goes on the ship and she's in a wheelchair, and then by the end of the movie, when she she actually does have the diamond in her, on her, she had the diamond all all these years, and she walks up a flight of stairs, onto the main deck. Of the Caldish, the research vessel, a vessel. She walks across the deck, barefoot in her mind, at, without, and she climbs onto the railing, unassisted. And so that says, you know, one thing people complain about. The other thing that a lot of people complain about was the fact that uh, when, in the end, after the sinking, you had King was lying on the store. And one of the pieces of wreckage, which is, a, which is like a, this big oak door, oak wooden door, and leaning on the capital doesn't get on the door with her. Well, that's not true because he actually did see him going onto the door, and he helps came with to get onto the door. Get on top of this, you'll be safe there. At least you won't be in the water. And that's where she got on. Jack tries to climb on, and he couldn't climb on. Because the weight of the both of them tipped the door over. So instead of having just both of them on the door, she came with this cat, a rose was on the door. And that's how she lived, because she remained on the door and she was not in the water. And that's how she got to live and he died. Because he froze to death in the water. And I've been complaining, oh, how come both of them went out on the door? And, but there was a reason, because the door won't, and, and I think. National Geographic did an experiment on that and it proved that they couldn't stay on the door. And another reason was that James Cameron felt that one of those two characters had to die and he picked the Leonardo DiCaprio character to die. So it was already predetermined that he was going to die anyway. And his character was. And there was one thing. And the other thing was when he does die, both one of the boats came back and you know, she let, and when she finds that, and Rose goes, Jack, there's a boat. There's a boat, Jack. And then she realizes that he had died. She lets go of his hand. Because they were both holding hands. So, he said, so he pulled, she pulled his hand off of her. Off of her hand. And he just sank to the bottom, bottom of the ocean. And he was having those of her life. How come she didn't take pulled his body onto the uh, ship so at least he could bury his body. Well, you know, there's another little inconsistency there with, with that. But I didn't have you know, a problem with, with the woman in the, the, the uh, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, scene where she lets go of his hand and, she, and he drops in the ocean. I didn't have a problem with that part. 
And the other point I could, you know, with Chloe Stewart walking, you know, walking on the deck and climbing onto the railing. I can understand that, stand that argument, and that nitpick. But the mess is kind of like overdoing it. Because people don't have anything else better to, than to go through movies and nitpick all the time. That's what I try to do with this video, it's not to nitpick so much. I like other internet viewers who, who nitpick over every little thing. But on Titanic, I think that's one of the few movies I feel that deserves the Academy Award for Best Picture in one. And it became the second picture, uh, or the first picture to spend her to win 11 Academy Awards. And that's the most any movie has ever won. And it's also one of the few movies in Hollywood that won for Best Picture without any actors winning. It was only like two. I think it was like only like two actors who were nominated for uh, Titanic. And it was Kate Winslet and Gloria Stewart, and they both played for the same part. But I didn't think that Gloria Stewart was going to win because she played a part of an animator. I don't think there's ever been a movie where an animator has won the Academy Award for Best Picture. And then when I saw the Academy Awards, I was curious of how many awards the Titanic would win. And I was also curious to see if the tag would get screwed out of the Best Picture Award. Thankfully, he didn't get screwed out of the Best Picture Award. And as soon as I saw that Gloria Stewart didn't win the for Best Supporting Actress, I knew that Kate Winslet was not going to win. Because one of the complaints that came about Kate Winslet in the film is that because she always looks directly at the camera with these crazy blank expressions on her face all the time. She always, like, when the scene where Jack invites, gives her a note, a pass her a note, you go to a real point, she looks at the note and goes like this. Like that. And, and of course, there was other scenes where where Jack was showing her uh, his work. And so oh, she, she was a one legged to some the news he, he, he drew. I said, Oh, you must have a, she goes, Oh, you must have a little bit of this girl because you use her a lot. You know, you drew a lot. I said, yeah, I liked her, but, but she was a one-legged prostitute. She goes like this. You know, you know, you know it looks like that. And, and that's what bothered a lot of people, was that, how she, her expressions. And she looks really expert at the camera. And she gives all these crazy expressions on her face. She tilts her head like this. And goes like this. And that's what, that, that's probably one reason why she didn't win. And thankfully, she eventually won one by playing a Nazi. It couldn't mean anything. That's not that, uh, and the meter. But Leonardo DiCaprio should have been nominated, and he was so mad that he wasn't nominated, he didn't show up at the Academy Awards ceremony. And, which I can understand why. He said, What? If I'm not nominated, why, why should I bother showing up for? And, but other actors should have been nominated as well. I think Billy Zane should have been nominated. Uh, which he was, well, the other award that they tagged him with was nominated for 14 awards. Uh, and the three they didn't get was Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, and for the makeup. And, but won everything else. All well, the other awards that, that was, that Titanic was nominated for won. And like I say, it was one of the few movies that, that won for Best Picture that didn't have anybody who won for Best Actor. I think all goal was one this year. Uh, who, that one. I don't think anybody who was in the movies is an actor. One for best actor for Argo. And of course, uh, last year or two years ago, when we had, uh, what was going to, what was going to say, King's Speech, they realized that Colin Firth won for best, for best actor for that one. But the other ones that didn't win, it was like Crash didn't win any acting awards. Uh, nor the Rings. You know, but it was the third movie that won the Never Academy Awards. The uh, Return, Nor the Rings, Return of the King. They won the Never Academy Awards, but not one for uh, any acting awards. And of course, Rocky. Also, when Rocky won in 1976, nobody who was acting, who was nominated for an acting award, won for, for Best Actor. And Titanic is also one of them. So. That's also kind of weird. Because I always feel that you should have at least one person, uh, either a supporting actor or a best actor, 
or an actress or what to to win. You gotta have at least one one person that will uh, end up winning an acting award. But you know, so that's me. That's what the, the stupid Academy does. But I'm surprised that, that Titanic won for Best Picture because it won the most. Uh, because it drew the most money. Because that's what happened with E.T. E.T. was the number one money movie of all time in the box office before Titanic came along. And it didn't win anything in the box office. I think it maybe won for musical score, but that's about it. It didn't win anything. Yeah, and that's, and that was the one movie that I thought they should have won for Best Picture and didn't. That one and Zero Dwarf 30. So it was like two, two films. But I'm glad the Titanic won. Please see Titanic if, you ne- if one of the few would have been brain dead in the last 15 years and haven't seen Titanic. Please see it and it's real, really worth seeing. For, you know it's a 3 hour 15 minute movie. It goes by so fast. Faster than any 3 hour 15 minute movie I've ever seen. So please like the video. My, my comments and subscribe to my page uh, subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching